Hey guys, welcome back. If you're coming from the last video in this playlist, we left off on lab four and now we're moving into lab five. So here are the objectives for this lab. We're gonna take the SQL and PL SQL that we used in lab four. We're gonna turn those into some APIs and then we'll do some exploration. So let's go ahead and start with task one. This says to go to our rest workshop. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can either click this hamburger button, you can click rest here, or you can click the Oracle database actions and we'll take you to the launch pad. And then you can go to development and then you can click rest. You'll probably see the launch pad when you first log in. And that's probably gonna be the easiest way for you to get to the rest workshop here. And again, I think I covered this in maybe lab two or lab three. If you click, um, you've got all your objects up here. If you click auto rest, it'll show you everything that's been auto rest enabled for you. So this is our CSV data table. We're gonna go to rest. I can also click down here and recently visited. So now that I'm there, we're gonna create a module. So module is kind of like all of your APIs that um, maybe for instance, you have like a microservice and you have a set of APIs that revolve around a certain business operation. You know, maybe you have like three or four different business operations that have to do with these records here. What we wanna do is we'll click on modules. Since we don't have any, we will create a module. The module name is going to take this dot notation here. I'm just going to copy what I put in the lab here. And then you'll see these little detail tabs. They're kind of peppered throughout the labs. So if you want to learn more about the modules, you can click those. And then for base path, we want to add this guy in here. I just mimicked whatever the example was. You can see whatever you put down here is going to be down here also. And then we say we we don't want this to be protected yet. We will in a little bit, but not now. And then I think that's it. So we're going to hit create. So pagination size says here we can choose a number between zero and a thousand. Pagination size is um, every time you query for results, like every time your API brings back results, whether that's in the browser or that's in your terminal or that's to whatever your application is, you can set the size of the results, the result body. So like for instance, in this case, like if I change pagination size to five, I'd only see five results at a time and then I could increment in sets of five but for here I'm just gonna keep it as 25 and then we can use the show code toggle to show you what the code actually looks like but we're gonna exit out of that and then I'm happy with everything how everything looks here so I'm gonna click create so I've created my module you'll get this little toast down here that shows you on the bottom that shows you that the module is created but I can't really do anything yet so what I need to do is I need to create a template so a template is well in this case we're not doing anything fancy with the templates we are taking advantage of these route parameters here I'll show you what this looks like in practice but we're just calling this SQL report and then we're saying ID so this is actually a parameter that ORDS implicitly recognizes and that doesn't mean anything to you right now and it shouldn't mean anything to you right now so don't worry about it but you'll see what this looks like here in practice and we can go ahead and click create so now we have this template so now what we can do is for this template we can create these different methods or operations if I click create handler here are my methods so like methods and or operation so I've got a template the template can have these different methods so I could have like four different API's that are all nested underneath the SQL report slash colon ID template and then if you want to go up even one more level all that stuff is nested underneath whatever the name of my resource module is. So we've just created the handler, we're here now. So we're going to keep this method as a get, and then we're going to take this SQL. Uh, so this is like a simple version of an API. For source type, we want collection query because we want a bunch of stuff. Everything that satisfies this condition here, which is select everything from the CSV data table where column two is equal to colon ID. You kind of saw this in the previous lab where we created the return count procedure we passed in a column two parameter, but this is a little bit different. Let me go back to our lab here and see if we need to do anything special. It doesn't look like it, so we'll click create. And now we can actually see what this looks like in practice. So I can do this a couple of ways. I can click the green button here and then a little dialogue or a little module will pop up, which says, okay, what's the ID? ID is not like identification. ID is just something that we use in ORDS here, which corresponds to this stuff right here. So we're saying like a value in column two is equal to ID. This ID is mapped to this ID up here. Hopefully I can zoom in this ID up here. 
in practice what this would look like is say for instance you point your browser to https colon slash slash blah 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 slash api slash sql report slash colon id if we were put a1 in place of that id then boards will see that a1 is in the place of where colon id is and it will use that in this sql statement here i guess it will impute that automatically so let's do that here. So let's use A1. And again, depending on the lab that you have, it's my mistake. If you use capital A1, it may not work. I need to fix that. But you can see here, it's returning everything. And remember, in the last lab, we batch loaded like two plus million rows. So that's why we're seeing more than seven rows here, because we have a lot more stuff. So this can be kind of difficult to see. You got a couple options here. You can open this in a new browser tab. This is if you're doing stuff in the GUI. If you're doing stuff in database actions, you can, you can look at this. Oh, that's nice. Or you can download this stuff. So you've got a lot of great options here. Okay, so that's like the first way that you can test this. You can also just click open a new tab and it will ask you here. And then it will just take you to a new tab. We saw a version of this in, I don't know, like lab two. But again, if you're in Safari, this might be challenging for you to see. So you can right click inspect element and then go to your network tab in your developer tools here, and you can actually see everything. Let me pause here because I might be talking about some stuff that we're about to talk about. So yeah, so I just do the same thing here. So we want to spend a couple seconds here. So in, I don't know, it was like lab two, lab three, I was talking about these relation links, and then you've got this has more true property. And remember what we said, it's like asking the question, has more true, it's like slang for saying, yeah, there's more stuff. And then you see the limit and the, and the count corresponds to that pagination that we set. It's everything's going to increment automatically in batches of 25. So since we have a has more is true, we do have a next link, which is neat. If you see here, it's the same stuff, but basically what we're saying is I've got my boards endpoint. I'm using that in the route parameter for the SQL. Do that, but instead of giving me the first set of results, give me the next 25 sets of results. So here, if I go if I copy this and I copy, open a new tab, inspect element, and then go to network, it's not going to look different to you. It's all going to look the same, but we still have a has more condition equals true. But now if you see there's a little bit of a difference, we're offsetting by 25. And so now we have 26 through 50. And what's even cooler here is now we have one more link, relational link, we have the previous link. This kind of illustrates what I was just saying. If you go to the previous link, see how there's no query parameter? There's no offset equals 50. That's basically just taking us to the very beginning. And then our next link here is offsetting by 50, which if you do your math, that will give us results 50 through 75 because we're doing everything in blocks of 25. Now what we need to do is go back to where we were. So we're at task two now created the SQL report slash colon ID. We're going to create another template. You can use these breadcrumbs up here. These are called breadcrumbs to go to the root top here. So we've got this template. That's a unique template. So we can do get post put delete for something that matches this template. If we want to do more stuff, we've got to create another template. So it's just that's what we're going to do. So we're going to call this one biz logic, business logic. That's it. There's nothing else that you need to do here. Just click create. Now the handler is where like this, the magic really happens, right? That's where we put our code. So you will see this code is going to look pretty familiar. In this case, we want post and we are going to put this PL SQL into that field. This should look similar to what we saw, I don't know, lab two or lab three. So we're calling upon this return count function. And if you remember in that return count function, let me go back to it. There are two parameters for this return count function. There's P input and there's P output. P input is going to be an input parameter and then P output will be an output parameter. P output is the results of all this. All right, so now we're back here. So again, we're going to copy this and we say to put this directly into your source code block here. And then again, you can see the show code. That's what it looks like there. The nice thing about this is it automatically does all the quotes for you. See how the P source already has the single quotes. It's nice. And then we'll click create. Okay. So now we're back at a familiar screen for this. Since we're not relying on like the built-in parameter functions for ORDs, we need to identify, we need to create these parameters. So that's what we're doing here. So we'll start off with the output. It could start off with input. doesn't matter. We'll just call this. 
output and then output very literally and then the source is response so when the server responds we're telling it where should that response go should it be a header value should it go into the uri the actual url portion or a response a response body that's what we're doing here i think we need to change this to integer because it's going to be a number and then the access method is like going to be output. We're saying like, is this going to be an input or is this going to be an output? So it's going to be an output and then we can click create. Okay. So that one's done. So that output corresponds with this output here. And so this and all the stuff that we've identified down here, parameters, we don't actually need to declare an input because when we post, when we do this post request, we're actually going to provide this information here. This is what our curl command looks like. So we're passing along the values that this guy is expecting. And since output is null, like there shouldn't be an output, you can actually remove that if you want to, or you can just leave the quotes. Either one will work. But let's see what this looks like. Man, there's so many different ways that you can do this, but you can do it straight from here. And just make sure that we're in the correct environment. And then you can actually add in. So I click this plus button. You can actually add in the, the values that you want. So we'll do A1. And then since output is null, we'll just do null for output. And then it doesn't do anything. I'm going to copy this and bring it over here. You can just do this if you want to. I think you can just leave it out altogether. Um, but we'll see what that looks like. And then put this guy in here so you can see it. And then we'll click enter. And it should turn the count of what we just requested. So we did a post request. We sent over the input parameter, which is A1. We didn't send over an output parameter because there isn't one for this first part of this operation. And then internally, what ORDS does is it uses that ID. Well, it uses the return count procedure with the parameters that we need. And one of them is the input parameter. The other one's the output parameter. And we say output is bound to this guy down here, output, output. And then it's going to be, so it's like, what do we do with that output? That's gonna be ret returned to us in the response as an integer parameter type integer, which is what we see down here. And we say here, you can go through, you know, some different examples here. It's, uh, it also says in lowercase, last portion that we have here. And we already kind of looked over this, but is you're probably familiar, maybe you're familiar with the Swagger editor, this open API view. Um, I did that very fast, but let's say for instance, you're at your modules. Actually, I'll go to the rest. I'm at the like top level of the rest workshop. I can click on modules. And then even from here, I can click open API view and it will take me to kind of like a test ground. So like say for instance, we want to test an endpoint. We'll try it out. And then ID is string. So you, you have to know that like what you're looking for is alphanumeric. So in this case, I'll do like A2 and then we'll execute. And it's nice because it shows you the curl command that you should use nicely formatted, shows you what your expected response is. And then you have these nice headers here that you have as well, just for your reference. Now for here, let's try this one out. We'll do like, I don't know, A5. I don't know if this will work because I don't even know if A5 exists, but all right. So this looks a little different, right? This is our get request that has the, you know, quote unquote ID or this route pattern where it's A5. So you can see how ORDS interprets this. See, it says SQL report, and then it's got the curly brackets ID. That's kind of a universal syntax for like these APIs. But internally, this is this is how it does its thing here. And then you can see all of our result sets here. The nice thing about this is you can download these result sets. So say, for instance, if, if you want to do some things locally, maybe you want to just do things with like a static file. You just want like a representation of what your stuff looks like. You know, you have your static file there, which is pretty nice. Okay, so I think that's it. That almost takes us to the end. Uh, we're talking about this open API stuff. So say, for instance, you wanted to share the module definitions. You could do that a couple of ways. You can export in PL SQL or open API. All right, so they look a little bit different. So PL SQL actually exports all the different ORDS procedures for basically recreating this. So I could give this to somebody. Actually, you don't even need this because like if you're able to log into database actions, then your schema has already been enabled. So you don't even need this here, just as an FYI, but it has everything in here. So this would recreate this right here. If you imported this module, Right. If I click this import module, it would recreate exactly what I see here for whatever schema that I'm in. Alternatively, you can export in the open API. And what this does is it says, here's what the structure of your API should look like. So it doesn't dictate that you have to do that in PL SQL. 
that's it for this lab here. Uh, the last one is going to be uh, lab six. It's going to be secure REST endpoints. You can see the objectives here. Um, we're going to do some OAuth 2.0 authentication and authorization. And then uh, we'll show you what that looks like when you lock down your APIs. This is really going to be in the context of like client applications, like when you use GitHub or Google or some other like third party app. It's kind of how this works. Thanks. And I will see you in the next one.